Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on selecting raters using the intraclass correlation coefficient in SPSS. So oftentimes in counseling research, we use raters to score participant characteristics on some sort of measure. And to accurately interpret the results, we need to have a certain level of inter-rater reliability. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS, you can see I have 20 participants, and each of these 20 participants was scored by five raters. And let's presume these raters were rating counseling skills, with 10 being indicative of a high level of counseling skill and a one being indicative of a low level. So before we can make any type of interpretation based on these data, we have to take a look at the inter-rater reliability. So first we'll go to analyze and then to scale and then reliability analysis. This is what the dialog looks like by default. So under items, I'm just going to move over the scores from each rater. Move that over into items. And then the model is going to stay as alpha. And then in statistics, you see there's a lot of different possibilities to select here. I'm going to select item, scale, scale item if deleted, correlations, means, and then the intraclass correlation coefficient. So you can see when I checked off intraclass correlation coefficient, a model and type became available. And you can see there are three models available, two-way mixed, two-way random, and one-way random. If we had different raters in this example, so that would be where the raters are not consistent, so you don't have each rater rating all 20 participants, that would be one-way random. In this case, we do not have that, however. We have the same raters who rated all 20 participants. So that leaves us with two-way random and two-way mixed. Two-way mixed would be if we had the same raters and we had the entire population of raters. So the raters that we were using were the only raters of interest to the readers. That would be a two-way mixed. But in this case, let's assume we're using the same raters and a sample of raters, meaning there were several researchers we could have used as raters, and we selected a sample of those. In this instance, we would use two-way random. So we're going to select a model two-way random. And then we move over and we can see we have type. And under type, we have consistency and absolute agreement. So variables can be consistent with one another, but not necessarily agree. For example, some of the raters could have been using a 1 through 100 scale and others a 1 through 10. You won't have absolute agreement there. Right? The scores probably won't be very similar because they're on different scales, but they could be consistent. Now that wouldn't necessarily be a good way to construct a study, to have multiple raters using different scales, but consistency is what you would select if you're really just interested in how consistent the raters were and not in how different the actual scores were. In this case, we want agreement or want to measure agreement uh, between the raters on this 1 through 10 scale. So we want absolute agreement as our type. So from here I'm going to click continue. It's going to bring me back to the reliability analysis dialog and click OK. And you can see here's the output from SPSS. So you have the case summary. Right? We had uh, all valid cases. All 20 cases were valid. And we can see we have Chromebooks Alpha here, 
and we do want to evaluate this first before moving on and evaluating the other tables. Any value above 0.7 here is acceptable, above 0.8 is good. Then moving down to the item statistics, we can see we have the means for each rater. And of note here is rater 5 was the most strict, 4.7 was the mean, and the least strict would have been rater 2 at 5.75. Also notice that Raider 5 has the highest standard deviation and Raider 4 has the lowest standard deviation. Next we have the inter-item correlation matrix. And this is fairly useful for seeing what Raider might stand out as not agreeing too well with the other Raiders. So if we look at Raider 1, of course it's always going to be, a, the Raider is always going to be a perfect match with the same Raiders. That's what the 1 is here. Uh, but their correlation with Raider 2, uh, fairly high. Raider 3, fairly high, but, but not as high for Raider 4 or Raider 5. And we can see for Raider 2 and Raider 3, a fairly high correlation, a kind of moderate correlation between Raider uh, 2 and 5, but for Raider 2 and Raider 4, uh, a low correlation, also Raider 5 and Raider 4 a fairly low correlation, 0.267. Then the summary item statistics gives us the item means. We have the minimum, uh, maximum range, and the maximum divided by the minimum. And then we have the item total statistics. So moving back up here to the reliability statistics, you see that the Chromebook's alpha was 0.829, so I want to keep that in mind, 0.829. And move down here to the item total statistics. And this table lets us see what the Chromebook's alpha would be if a certain rater was deleted from the analysis. So this is a, a convenient table to interpret when you're trying to decide what raters to include and what raters to potentially exclude. So we can see if we deleted the data from Raider 1, Raider 2, or Raider 3, we're going to decrease Chromebook's alpha. It's 0.829 right now, and it would decrease if one of those three raters was removed. However, for Raider 4 and Raider 5, if we were to take out Raider 4, for instance, a Chromebook's alpha would increase to 0.847, and if we remove the uh, Raider 5 variable, it would increase to 0.846. So it's important to recognize here that in terms of deciding to remove one or more Raiders, that if a, a Raider is removed and that results in a higher Chromebook's alpha, that doesn't mean that that was necessarily a poor Raider. That could have been the most accurate rater. It just tells us that that particular rater didn't agree very well with the other raters. So it's not an indication of performance, it's an indication of how well that rater agreed with the other raters in the study. Moving down, the next table is the scale statistics table, where we have the mean, variance, standard deviation, and the number of items. And then for the last table, we have the interclass correlation coefficient. And you can see there are two listed here, single measures and average measures. The majority of the time when we're using interclass correlation coefficients, we're interested in average measures. The single measures would be used if you wanted to answer the question, how accurate would a single rater be? in assessing the counseling skills of these students. And we can see here that interclass correlation is 0.492. To be in the acceptable range, we're looking for above 0.7, and again for good, above 0.8. The more commonly interpreted value here would be the average measures. And in this case, the value is 0.8. 829. 
So we would interpret this as 82.9% of the variance in the mean of the raters in the study is real. And based on our cutoff values, that would be a good level of inter-rater reliability. I hope you found this video on selecting raters using the intra-class correlation coefficient in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.